lot of people want to know what's the role of reason in Islam or how do reason and faith sort of intersect or complement each other or oppose each other. And I would refer people to Dr. Sherman Jackson's book, Islam and the Problem of Black Suffering, in which he makes a very, very important point that reason is not just one thing. And this is something that goes back to, um, you know, uh, even the classical tradition. You go to um, ad Darimi and some of his works and other people like classical Islamic scholars, I say reason is not just one thing. Okay. And actually it's an ideological move to try to portray reason as if it's one thing or to try to portray philosophy as if all thinking is philosophy. No, that's that really kind of conceals a lot of really important differences between traditions of reason, between traditions of philosophy, between tra traditions of thinking, right? And each sort of tradition of reason has certain suppositions and assumptions and values that are behind it, right? Um, obviously, it's well known for anybody who's gone a little bit into Greek philosophy. They had certain, you know, there's the problem of universals and this kind of idea about, well, you have substance and form and, you know, how can the, uh, the substance inhere in the form or vice versa and all these sorts of problems that came about what seemed or appeared to be a contradiction is dependent upon the categories, is dependent upon the way in which they were framing things. Okay. Is that all reason? Is that what reason is? No, that's not, that doesn't have an exhaustive monopoly on reason. Right? There's other types of reason. And this is maybe the central critique of Ibn Taymiyyah when he interacts with the, philosoph the philosophers, studies all their works, and then you know, writes Dar Ta'arud and other works like that, is that there is a different tradition of reason that is inherent to the Islamic revelation. Okay, you take the Quran and the Sunnah. There is reason within it, okay? A whole system of reason, an organic, divine system of reason, okay? And so the question is not of quantity, okay? The question is not, well, how much reason do we allow uh, in our faith? Or, um, you know, you hear this a lot, you know, it's like, oh, well, they prioritize reason over revelation. That's not the right way to think about it. The right, the right way to think about it is that reason is not just one thing. Okay, so it's not about prioritizing one versus the other. It's about using the tradition of reason that is inherent and indigenous to our tradition, the one that's communicated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and not borrowing a foreign external tradition of reason that has other su suppositions, other categories, other sort of assumptions that actually end up contradicting our tradition, either the reason that's found within it, or even the claims or conclusions or, you know, substantive sort of things that we're supposed to believe in. Okay, so um, that's what I would say is that reason is not just one thing, but there is reason within the revelation. There's the reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, and that's the reason that we use in understanding our texts, you know, um, affirming the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and there's no contradiction between that and true faith.